innovation is a very complex and often very difficult process that involves uh, engaging talented people toward a worthwhile goal, in our case the discovery of new medicines. It can often be the result of painstaking work carried out actually over, over many years. There's sometimes an element of serendipity, but mostly it's persistence, it's incorporating the latest knowledge, it's building a team of people who can effectively work together through a very complex process, starting with a biological target and going to all the way to a medicine in a pharmacy. Increasingly, innovation in the pharmaceutical industry is a very networked activity. Increasingly, we find scientists in our company working with academic researchers, working with government researchers, even with individuals in not-for-profits who share our interest in helping to prevent or treat disease. So the importance of partnerships, the importance of building strong networks among people who may represent very different constituencies or come from very different backgrounds is, I believe, going to be very essential uh, for the discovery of medicines in the 21st century. A great example is the work that we're engaged in right now on tuberculosis. Uh, over 10 years ago, Lilly announced a global multi-drug resistant tuberculosis initiative uh, based on two drugs that we had in hand that had been shown to be useful in the treatment of that disease. However, to realize the full promise that these medicines offered, we ended up partnering with two dozen different international organizations in order to ensure that the medicines were manufactured locally according to the highest standards, uh, that they were administered by highly trained health professionals, and that the individuals living in these various locations around the world understood what TB was and how one goes about treating tuberculosis. This is a great example, I think, of where we might have had the medicine in hand, but to really realize the full value of that medicine, we had to partner with individuals uh, representing the full value chain all the way to the patient. We use the term innovation ecosystem to describe the environment that's necessary in order for scientific and medical innovation to come about in the first place, but moreover to be sustainable. Certainly it requires an investment in research, it requires capable uh, scientists, uh, physicians, uh, it, it requires a, a, a target, a substrate, an idea, but beyond that it requires policies that enable us to have the confidence that in fact the substantial investments involved uh, in this research to begin with uh, stand a chance of ultimately paying off for the inventor but for the patient at the end of the day. These include intellectual property protection rules. These include regulatory systems that are straightforward and fair and transparent. And ultimately it includes a recognition of value on the part of the people who benefit from these medicines so that the time and the cost involved in bringing them to patients is in some way rewarded. The real value of innovative medicines is helping people. It's making life better. It's preventing disease. It's treating disease. And at some level, we're all going to be patients. I learned this firsthand a year ago when I had major heart surgery. And during my recovery, you can bet that I began to understand the value of medicines at a deeply personal and entirely different level than the one that, uh, that I had carried in my head for these 35 years that I've been in the industry. What we do in the pharmaceutical industry makes a difference for people all over the world. It's our intention that everyone ultimately benefit from the discoveries in our laboratories and that together we solve and address some of these pressing health issues that we face everywhere.